Welcome to the Alcaviva family. My name is Vajra and this is my son Ramsey. And we are here today to introduce you to Joe, who is our Alcaviva water specialist. And he's going to be explaining about our new machine, the Vesta, how do you install and operate this awesome machine. Please take the time to watch this short video in its entirety. There's a lot of information that will help you start using your Vesta to the best performance possible. So here we have your brand new Vesta water ionizer. Let's go ahead and open up the box and see what's inside. It's best to lay these things down on their side before you start pulling everything out. It protects the ionizer from falling over once the packaging's removed. To start, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and remove the power cord and set this aside. Secondly, go ahead and pull out the styrofoam protective top that's been protecting your ionizer. You'll see a couple boxes, one on each side. Both these can come out as well. One's empty that has nothing in it and the other has some goodies we're going to play with in a little bit. To remove the ionizer, go ahead and use both hands and slide it out. It's good if you have somebody that can hold the box for you at this point. One last thing is your owner's manual packet that also has some of the hoses we're going to need for installation. Let's go ahead and open up the ionizer by first removing this protective plastic bag that comes over it. This is just to prevent any moisture from getting into it and keep it from scratching up during shipping and transport. The bag will slide off nice and easy. Let's go ahead and set this aside and take a look at all the pieces that come in that box we mentioned earlier. You're going to find a little bag just like this one that's going to include your stainless steel flexible hose. This is where the water that you've selected on your ionizer will come out. With this, there's also a bag of testing reagents, a small plastic tool for installing and releasing these types of hoses, and an extra fuse in case anything ever happens to your ionizer. There's also a diverter kit, which is just like this. This has not only the diverter that we're going to use to install this to your kitchen faucet, but several accessories making it adaptable to most of our consumers. Next we have the power cord. It's just coming in a Ziploc bag here. Owner's manual packet that also contains the hoses we're going to need for installation. Be sure to hang on to your owner's manual. It's very comprehensive, easy to understand, and quite informative. It will help you make a lot of decisions on how to best use your ionizer. Let's start by taking a look at a few of the features that are here on your Vesta ionizer. First, we have this top spout here that rotates 360 degrees. This is where that stainless steel flexible hose is going to come out of. This is just a simple plug that can be removed to keep any air or dirt from getting in there during transport. Next, when we look at the bottom, you're going to notice a few things. There's a plug here. That's going to be for the end of your power cord. Right next to it, this red switch, is your main power to turn the unit on and off. Here, in this white elbow, this is your water inlet. This is going to come from your tap. And this here is your acidic drain line. This is going to be some of the byproduct that's going to come out and just spill into your sink. Next, and one of the most important features, is your water flow control knob. This simply turns the water on and off, but anywhere in between can restrict the flow and slow the water down in your ionizer. This is important because flow rate directly affects the level of ionization that you can reach. So if you wanted a super strong alkaline water or a super, super strong acidic water, this could come into play for you. It's also very important that it can control all of the water going to the ionizer because of the couple of different installation options that we have. The standard installation that most people use is using a diverter valve like this one. The diverter valve is a simple little thing that can take your tap water and divert it to the tap water inlet of your ionizer. It looks just like this and attaches very simply to your faucet. Okay. One of the accessories are these little guys here. 
And what these do is they allow us to adapt for different size faucets and aerators in most standard homes. The other installation option we have is plumbing directly to the cold water line using a simple T-splitter like this that are available at most hardware stores. For this type of installation, we would recommend that you hire a licensed plumber. Most sinks come with a standard size aerator similar to this. To get this off, it unthreads very simply. If it doesn't come off with your hand, you can use a pair of channel lock pliers such as this. A great tip is to wrap a little tape around the threads and that'll keep from scarring up the surface of your aerator if you ever want to put it back on. With the aerator off, you simply take the diverter and thread it right to it such as this. Hand tight's pretty good. Make sure that it's tight, but not, don't over tighten it. When you turn this on, if you notice a small leak coming out of the top here, there's a couple of very easy solutions and ways of fixing that. One is to go to the hardware store and pick up a roll of Teflon plumber's tape just like this. They're widely available and usually under a dollar. Don't forget that we've included two different size rubber washers inside of that accessory kit that came with the diverter. That's in case the threads on the top of your faucet aren't quite long enough to reach the gasket inside of the diverter making the seal. So it may be possible to correct that leak by using one that's a little bit thicker. Now we've included adapters that will fit 95% of people's needs, but with a lot of the more modern style faucets, especially some of the spray types and the pull-out kind, we're starting to see more and more sizes that are a little bit different and varied. We can't count for everybody, but most hardware stores will have a simple little adapter fitting just like this. And an easy way to tell the right one for your needs is to go ahead and bring in the aerator as well as the diverter and anybody in the plumbing section should be able to help you out. To install this one, we are going to need this little adapter. It looks just like this. To start, you go ahead and remove the aerator. Now, you take your diverter and install the adapter fitting that we've just added and it simply threads into place. So there you have it, an installed diverter valve. And note that all functions of the sink still work. Next we're going to go ahead and install the stainless steel flexible tube. This is where you're going to get the water that you've selected on your ionizer. On one side there's a flat spot. This is very important because it can only fit into this top spout one way. To install it, you line those two up, give it a good push, until you hear a click. That means that it's seated in there really well and that you're not going to have any problems. You can give it a little tug to make sure that it doesn't come out easily and that's installed. For the next steps we're going to start installing the hoses and the power cord. There's a couple things that might help you here. One, a glass of hot water. Two, a small pair of pliers. And three, a good sharp pair of scissors. We're going to start by laying the ionizer on its side. The first things that we're going to have to do are remove these safety plugs. The one on the acidic elbow is just a simple black cover that comes off easily. The other one is a stop plug in what's called a quick connect fitting. These fittings work kind of like a Chinese finger trap that we all used to play with when we were kids and that the more you pull the tighter they get. We've included this tool to make this part a little bit easier. Okay. To use this tool properly we need to hold down the small ring located at the base of this fitting. To do this you simply insert this and lift up. Now while holding down on that ring the piece will come right out. it just pushes right into place. The next step we're going to go ahead and install the gray acidic line over this fitting here. You'll see that it's labeled outlet. To do this we're also going to use the small pressure clamp that was provided in the accessory bag. The easiest way to do this is to use a small pair of pliers and press the two tabs together. This will expand it so that it can easily fit over the end of that tube. Slide it up an inch or so. 
Now a simple trick to get this to slide over this fitting a little bit easier is to use your hot water. Just go ahead and dip the end of that in there for about 20 seconds. Now we're going to go ahead and slide the tube directly over that fitting, bracing it on the back side of the fitting. Once it's in place, go ahead and get your pliers out and we're going to slide that little compression clamp all the way down to the end. Now we're going to go to our tap water inlet hose, which is this white quarter inch tubing here. To install this into the fitting here, you very simply slide it into place while bracing the back of the fitting and give it a little tug to make sure it's in there good and tight. These are those quick connect fittings. There's no need to do anything else. Now that we have our inlet and outlet tubing in place, we're going to go ahead and install the power cord. This will only go one way and simply snaps into place. We're going to go ahead and route this cord this way and stand the ionizer back up into position. The acidic hose just gently falls into the sink and this can be cut to length depending on the placement of your ionizer to place. So once you decide on a position for your ionizer, what I like to do is wrap this around the back of my sink. This gives it plenty of room to when you're turning the handle, it's never going to tug on the ionizer and it also keeps everything kind of out. Be sure to get a square cut because if it's crooked, it can leak. Once we have the hose cut into place, we're going to remove the small compression nut from the outside of the diverter. This will then slide over the end of this hose. Once it's on, this hose needs to come over this fitting. To do so, brace the back of the, the diverter and simply press it into place. Once it's in place, slide the compression fitting down and thread it in. Generally, hand tight is just fine. Once your ionizer is set up, there's a thin protective film over the display area to keep your ionizer looking new during shipping. You can remove this by simply peeling it off or leave it on if you choose. Please note that if you do choose to leave it on over time, it might start to look a little dingy or get scratched up. To take it off, you simply peel it off in the corner and carefully peel it down. So now I've got my Vesta installed and I'm drinking this wonderful water. How do I know that it's actually being ionized? The best thing to do is periodically check, I'd say every quarter or so, using the reagent drops that we supplied you with. And just make sure that you're getting a good pH shift and a variation throughout the different levels. What these do is they actually turn different colors based on the alkalinity or acidity of the water coming out of your machine. They're indicated by this chart right here, which is a little hard to see at this size, but it basically ranges from very acidic to very alkaline and turns different shades in between. So the reagent drops is really, you just need a few. The more drops you use, the more rich the color is going to look in the glass. The fewer drops you use, it's going to be a little bit more translucent. You really can't overdo it with these things. But again, you don't want to use them up because periodically it's good to check your ionizer. Now you can see how fast that one on the end turned. And that's a level four alkaline water nice and purple on the very high end of our scale, showing a great alkalinity. Right now it's probably between a 10 and a 10 and a half. This was our filtered water. And you can see that's kind of a medium tone of green, which is in the neutral range and about what you'd expect to see from the tap water. And this was a lower ionizer setting, turning this nice blue, that might be a little tricky to see. Turning a nice blue green, that means it's raised the pH to a little over an eight. So we're probably in the eight, eight and a half range there. So that's showing going up at gradual steps, the increase in alkalinity. 
Now let's go ahead and turn it on and do the same thing with some of the acidic waters so that you could see that in action as well. We're just rinsing them to make sure that we get rid of any of that alkaline water. Here we're going to get a sample of a nice strong acidic water. Again, just a few drops. Oh, that one might have been a little light. You can see the first glass has turned to a pale blue green, which is going to be somewhere in the, the very low six or the very high five range. A great level to use for washing your skin, your hair, things like that. Now this stuff here is quite a bit darker and it's turning orange green, or excuse me, it's turning yellow orange, which is going to put you in about the four to four and a half range on the pH scale. This is a super strong acidic water and would be great for cleaning up. In addition to testing with the reagent drops, your Vesta ionizer has another great feature that has a built-in pH and ORP meter right here on the display. These are a great way to tell what's going on when you're selecting different levels and paying attention to what types of strength of water you, you, you enjoy. As you can see, cycling to a different level of alkalinity is going to raise and lower the meters. Now pH, as we've discussed, is the potential alkalinity or acidity of a certain water. ORP is showing you the antioxidant potential also created in this process. It's a great way to keep track of what you're putting in your body. So now my vest is installed and I'm wondering what kind of maintenance do I need to do on my machine? You've just purchased a computer controlled water processing system and to protect your investment and your valuable warranty we're going to show you some simple maintenance and troubleshooting techniques to keep your ionizer in tip top shape. As with any other quality piece of equipment you've purchased, you're going to want to keep it clean. To do so, very simply clean it with a mild cleaner such as a Windex or glass product and a soft cloth. Never ever submerge the ionizer in any liquid. When you're doing your dishes, sometimes it's necessary to stop your sink and fill it up with hot soapy water. When you do that, try to remove the acidic coats just to keep anything from backing up in there and getting it kind of gross. If you're going to be away for an extended period of time, say a couple weeks or more, it's important to take proper care of your filters. The easiest way to do this is to run tap water through your ionizers while the filters are still in place. Because tap water is chlorinated and the chlorine will keep any bacteria from growing inside the filters. Once the waters run out, set them on the counter and let them completely dry out. You can store them in a cabinet, whatever is convenient for you. Now if you're unsure if your tap water is chlorinated or you're on an untreated water system, we're going to want to do something a little bit different, which is simply remove them, set them standing up so most of the water drains out of them, place them in a freezer bag, and put them in the crisper drawer of your fridge. It'll do the same thing. Once you've taken proper care of the filters, you can go ahead and shut the main power switch on the bottom of your ionizer off and simply unplug it from the wall. Nothing else is needed. The, our ionizers are equipped with a state-of-the-art cleaning system. However, it cleans all internal parts and can actually reach the dispensing end of the unit from here to here. If you start to see scale, set your power to a level three acidic water and slow the flow down and run it very strongly for about 15 minutes. That should clear up the issue inside. In addition, if you're starting to see scale build up, we'd recommend that you do this every couple of days for about two to three minutes as well as call in to the Alcaviva Technical Sword to see if they would recommend any other treatment for your areas. If you're not getting any power to your ionizer, there's a few things that you should check. A, we want to check the main power switch located on the bottom of the unit. If that, make sure that your ionizer is plugged in and try turning on the main power supply. If this doesn't work, there's a small fuse located under my finger between the plug head and the power switch. This little cover can be opened with a small flathead screwdriver and just check to make sure that the fuse is intact. Most kitchens and bathrooms in anywhere near water in your home are protected by these safety outlets. These can go wrong and trip quite frequently. To make sure that this is operating correctly, simply press the red button and it would reset. If your ionizer is powered on, as indicated by the sleep light right here, 
but not getting any water flow through it. Check to make sure that the line is connected to the diverter, that the tap water is on, and finally, that the flow control valve is open. The Vesta water ionizer is so smart that it has several programming options that can be adjusted to your needs. To access the programming menu, when your ionizer is in sleep mode such as this, press and hold the menu button located here. This allows you to open the menu and make adjustments. Once you have the menu open, you can cycle through the different options by pressing the alkaline button to move up or the purified button to move down. There's a great section in your owner's manual explaining what each of these levels is and how to change them. Let's start with the alkaline levels. Right now, we are on alkaline level 1, as indicated by AL1. We can cycle up to alkaline level 2, 3, or 4. We can keep going and get into the acidic level 1, 2, and 3 as well. All of these are programmed at zero. What this means is they're at a neutral power supply. Most people will never need to adjust these. However, in extremely hard water or extremely soft water, we can increase or decrease the amount of power to get you better results to suit your needs. To do this, use the acid button to increase or the filter reset button to decrease. These can go all the way from positive 19 being the strongest to negative 19 being the weakest. Again, most people will never need to use this option. Moving on, we're going to go to option FO8. This is for function 8 and this is to control your volume. We can get louder with the acidic button or we can make it quieter with the filter reset button. Stop when you find a pleasant volume. FO9 is your language selection. There are several to choose from. Again, the acidic and filter buttons are going to be your options for cycling through these. A sample You will hear each language option as you cycle through. Menu option F10 is for the display. There's three different options here. 7, 3, and 0. I'll explain each one. Option 7 is an approximation based on typical tap water found in the U.S. Option 3 adjusts based on a few different variables. And option 0 is completely off. The choice is yours. Inside of the programming menu, you'll find several inoperable options. This is because those options were programmed by the factory and there's no need to adjust them. You can tell when it's time to change your filters by these two filters labeled 1 and 2. This is a newer unit that we've been using today, so you can see that only one bar has been removed from this filter, while this one here is still full. This is because the filters run independently on separate counters. To change the filter, we're going to start by releasing these two snaps on the door to your filters. Once the door is off, there's a ring, a threaded ring, at the top of your filter that helps to keep it in place. We're going to need to unscrew this by turning it this direction. You'll see the filter raising up on its spring-loaded base. Once it's all the way to the top, simply press the filter down and lean it up. To put the filter back in, once we disposed of the old one and replaced the media inside, you line it up, press down, get it into place, and the spring will push up. Then turn that threaded ring in the opposite direction to secure the filter. And replace the door. The dual filter counters on the front, labeled filter 1 and filter 2, transfer over perfectly to the back of the ionizer when you're looking at it. So filter 1 is on your left hand side and filter 2 will be on your right. So once you've selected the filter you wish to reset, simply press and hold the filter reset button. The machine will tell you when it's done. Filter has been reset. 
then replay. So now that I've got my ionizer installed and I'm all ready to go, what level do I start at? Well, everybody's different, but we recommend that everybody starts at a level one and gradually steps up. Give it a week or so, see how you're feeling, and then go to a level two. But if you start to feel any, any detox symptoms at mm -hmm. all, such as fluey or achy, step back down and give it a couple more weeks. And you can progress like that until you're comfortable with the level you get to. And so what level do you drink? I drink a level three. So what is the best possible container that I can use for this wonderful water? The best things to use are either glass or stainless steel bottles like these. You can get them almost anywhere nowadays and, and they're a great way to carry your water. There's also certain plastics like Lexan that's BPA free that are pretty safe to use and not going to hurt you in any ways. What you really want to avoid is any of these single use mm -hmm. bottles. Um, they were never designed to be used more than once and can actually leach toxins into the water. Well, I hope we didn't put you to sleep and I hope that we covered all the bases for you. But if you have any questions left, please refer to your owner's manual, your Iron Ways associate, and if those don't help, there's a ton of information available in our resource center online. Thank you. <laughs>